China's rare earth card, how long can it be played? Why is the F-35 getting more expensive even with China tightening the screws? Australia's expansion failed, so why can't Vietnam be the alternative? Introduction Hello everyone, I'm Old K. I've been rooted in the rare earth industry for 15 years, witnessing countless shifts and changes in this field. From the dusty chaos of mining to the unpredictable international market, every step holds untold stories. Today, I'm taking you into a silent battlefield, Rare Earth War 2.0. This war without smoke is far more intense than you can imagine, impacting not only the survival of businesses but also the lifeline of global industries. Late at night, the emergency command center at Lockheed Martin headquarters in Herndon, Virginia, was brightly lit. On the large screen, the global supply chain network map for the F-35 Lightning II fighter jet was flashing with glaring red alerts. The avionics assembly line in Texas was the first to halt, followed by red lights appearing at the wing manufacturing workshop in Italy and the stealth coating spray facility in Japan. In the Pentagon's war room, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff roared into an encrypted phone, only to be told that inventory of terbium, a crucial element used to manufacture high-temperature permanent magnets and key components, had bottomed out. And 90% of this rare metals import channels originate from China's ionic rare earth mines in Ganzhou. This crisis had been brewing. When China's Ministry of Commerce announced that export controls on seven categories of medium and heavy rare earths, including gadolinium and terbium, would take effect, the international commodity market instantly reeled, spot prices for terbium oxide surged by 217% within 48 hours, and rare earth futures contracts on the London Metal Exchange triggered circuit breakers for five consecutive trading days. A secret report from the U.S. Geological Survey revealed that the Pentagon's strategic reserves of medium and heavy rare earths were only sufficient to maintain minimum production requirements for core equipment like the Patriot Air Defense System and M1A2 main battle tanks for 180 days. The F-35 project's terbium reserves, however, wouldn't even last through next week's production schedule. Even more devastating ripple effects are spreading. 11 Ticonderoga-class cruisers sealed by the U.S. Navy cannot complete modernization due to a lack of rare earth materials. NASA's Mars rover motors face the risk of supply disruption. Even Silicon Valley defense contractors are finding that their stock of gadolinium-based semiconductors, used to manufacture high-precision guidance chips, is about to run out. The latest assessment report from the Heritage Foundation pessimistically predicts that if the rare earth dilemma cannot be resolved within six months, the U.S. military's information warfare capabilities will regress by at least 15 years. How serious is this? For example, in the precise system of modern military industry, rare earths have long become the invisible chips that determine weapon performance. Take the U.S. military's ace fighter, the F-35. Its and slash APG-81 active electronically scanned array radar, mounted in the nose, requires the addition of lanthanum and yttrium elements in its radar-absorbing materials to achieve precise detection of targets hundreds of kilometers away. These two act like nanoshields, absorbing radar waves and converting them into heat the moment they hit the coating. As for the F-135 engine, the world's most powerful military turbofan engine, its combustion chamber and turbine blade surfaces rely on a cerium oxide protective layer built with cerium element for high temperature resistance, maintaining structural stability even at extreme temperatures of 2000 degrees Celsius. Even more critically, the insulation layer in the fighter's electrical system needs added europium. This rare earth element allows the insulating material to maintain an ultra-low conductivity of less than 10-14 S cm across a wide temperature range from minus 50 degrees Celsius to 150 degrees Celsius. Data shows that China holds over 85% of the absolute global dominance in the production capacity of these critical rare earth materials. A 2023 report by the U.S. Geological Survey, USGS, pointed out that the U.S. military's active arsenal, including the guidance systems of Patriot air defense missiles and the navigation ships of Tomahawk cruise missiles, are deeply reliant on rare earths. Once the rare earth supply chain breaks, these cutting-edge weapons will quickly lose their core performance. Even with its advanced aerodynamic design, the F-35 fighter would be nothing more than a metal frame unable to achieve stealth or precise strikes, becoming an iron bird that struggles to take off. What's even more impressive is that China possesses the world's only rare earth cascade extraction technology. This process, hailed as industrial magic, embodies the painstaking efforts of several generations of scientific researchers over nearly half a century. 
From academician Su Guangxian's team overcoming the challenge of rare earth extraction and separation processes in 1972 to achieving full process automated control today, China's technological iteration in rare earth separation has never stopped. Through its unique linked extraction method and specially formulated extractant systems, China can purify rare earth elements to an extreme purity of 99.999%. This ultra-high purity rare earth is a core raw material for manufacturing superconducting magnets in MRI machines and extreme ultraviolet light sources in lithography machines. In terms of cost control, China, leveraging its complete industrial chain advantage and large-scale production capacity, has compressed the production cost of one ton of high-purity rare earth to one-fifth of that of Western companies. Take a certain Japanese company, for example, its traditional step-by-step -step precipitation method for producing the same grade of product not only consumes three times the energy of China's method but also takes 15 days, with costs five times higher than Chinese companies. This is like China holding the vitamins for the world's high-tech industries. From smartphone chips to new energy vehicle motors, from satellite navigation systems to quantum computers, every cutting-edge field cannot do without this vitamin. Meanwhile, despite possessing the world's second-largest rare earth reserves, the US faces a mine but can't refine dilemma in high-end rare earth products because it lacks key extraction technology and even needs to import basic equipment for vitamin production from China. Today, let's peel back the curtain on this hidden war through three key points, the US military-industrial complex's fatal weakness, allies in a quagmire, and the global supply chain's vicious cycle. I to the US military-industrial complex's fatal weakness. A 2021 report by the US Department of Defense indicated that manufacturing one F-35 fighter jet requires 417 kilograms of rare earth materials. These strategic resources, used to create stealth coatings and engine permanent magnets, are like the bones and blood of modern fighter jets. However, ironically, the only active rare earth mine in the US mainland, the Mountain Pass Mine in California, is constrained by technological bottlenecks. 60% of the ore it extracts must be shipped across the ocean to China for refining and processing. This mine, which once held the hope for U.S. rare earth revival, has faced a technological gap since its relaunch in 2012. Local companies lack the full process technology to separate 17 rare metals like lanthanum, cerium, praseodymium, and neodymium from rare earth concentrates, and they cannot break through the process barriers of high purity metal refining. Even more embarrassingly, the only remaining rare earth separation plant in the U.S., the Linus plant in Texas, has an annual processing capacity of less than 5,000 tons and its production costs are three to five times higher than those of comparable Chinese companies. The outdated acid dissolution separation technology used by this plant is not only inefficient but also produces large amounts of polluting wastewater, with high environmental treatment costs further driving up production prices. This dual shortcoming in technology and capacity has plunged the US into a mine but can't use dilemma within the global rare earth supply chain, forcing it to continue relying on China's rare earth processing services. In 2020, China's rare earth quota reduction directly led to an 11-plane delay in F-35 deliveries. At that time, the U.S. Air Force laboratory attempted to substitute with Australian rare earths, but the cost was 300% higher, and the quality was inferior. Now that China has further tightened export controls, U.S. military industrial inventories can only last three to six months. Analysis The U.S. is not lacking in rare earth resources, its domestic mountain pass mine was once one of the world's largest rare earth producers. However, since the 1980s, large-scale outward transfer of U.S. manufacturing led to the initial relocation of high-pollution rare earth industry segments like smelting and separation, ultimately causing the collapse of the entire industrial system. Today, over 90% of global rare earth separation capacity is concentrated in China. From neodymium oxide required for NDFAB permanent magnets to lanthanum oxide crucial for laser guidance systems, every core process relies on Chinese technology. More importantly, Chinese companies have filed over 13,000 patents in rare earth refining, forming a comprehensive patent barrier from extractant development to waste residue treatment. Although the Pentagon has invested $2.5 billion in recent years to rebuild its domestic rare earth supply chain, it has consistently struggled to break through the technological blockade. The F-35's near halt in production in 2023 due to fluctuations in China's rare earth supply exposed the deep reliance of its high-end weapon systems on imported rare earths. 
This resource vulnerability beneath the cloak of military hegemony has gradually made the US a passive recipient in the rare earth game, holding resources but unable to develop them independently, shouting about security yet constrained by the supply chain. Behind its seemingly strong facade, it has effectively become a strategic hostage in rare earth trade. 2. Allies in a quagmire The US tried to break out by relying on allies, only to find they were all in over their heads. Australia, a false hope hindered by production expansion. Linus, once loudly proclaiming itself the rare earth savior beyond China, is now in deep trouble. This Australian rare earth giant located its key production capacity in Kuantan Port, Malaysia, but has been in constant conflict with the local government over the issue of radioactive tailings generated during rare earth refining. The Malaysian Ministry of Environment explicitly demanded that its factory achieve radiation-free operation by July 2023, or its license would be revoked. This deadline not only left Linus insufficient buffer time but also exposed its severe lack of environmental technology reserves. At the cost level, Linus's predicament is equally significant. Constrained by technological maturity and a lack of large-scale production, its production costs are twice as high as those of Chinese companies. Even at full operation, its annual capacity accounts for only 1% of the global rare earth market, making it difficult to shake China's dominant position in rare earth supply. Even more ironically, this company, which seeks to break China's rare earth monopoly, still needs to import core refining equipment, separating agents, and other critical materials from China. This vicious cycle of equipment dependence, high costs, limited capacity has turned Linus's so-called rare earth breakthrough plan into an international laughingstock. Vietnam, a raw material warehouse with backward technology. Vietnam has considerable rare earth reserves, but its purification technology lags behind China's by five years, forcing it to sell raw materials at low prices. They use an acid leaching process for purification, with an efficiency of only 70%, whereas China uses ion adsorption technology, achieving a purity of up to 99.999%. Even if Vietnam wanted to expand production, Japan and South Korea are unwilling to provide technology, and the US itself has a generational gap in this area, so it can't help at all. Analysis The predicament of these allies exposes a harsh reality, the rare earth industrial chain is a systemic endeavor. From mining to purification, from patents to equipment, it simply won't work if even one link is missing. Australia and Vietnam's efforts, at best, amount to working for China and fundamentally cannot become alternatives. 3. The global supply chain's vicious cycle. When China tightens its grip, global supply chains tremble. The European automotive industry is directly affected. Bosch's precision component production line in Stuttgart, Germany, is flashing red alerts. Due to dwindling samarium cobalt permanent magnet inventory, the supply cycle for vehicle sensors and ESP system components has surged from 15 days to 45 days, impacting production schedules for 23 global vehicle manufacturers. Across the Atlantic, the welding shop at Ford's Chicago assembly plant has fallen silent. A shortage of rare earth-based catalysts has forced the engine cylinder block production line to halt, sending 4,000 workers into temporary unpaid leave. Even more dramatically, Tesla's Gigafactory in Texas, hailed as a steel behemoth of intelligent manufacturing, was forced into a technology upgrade shutdown due, due to a cutoff of NDFAB magnets. In reality, it was recalibrating its production line with lower performance substitute materials. Elon Musk, at a shareholder meeting, showed a rare look of anxiety, admitting that if the supply chain stalemate continues, Cybertruck deliveries would be cut by 60%. This prompted Wall Street investors to dump Tesla stock overnight, wiping out over $30 billion in market value in a single day. The US attempted to break the deadlock through mineral diplomacy, only to find that rare earth production in Brazil and South Africa is a distant solution. The EU did consider building emergency reserves, but these would only meet 15% of military needs within 18 months. What's most remarkable is that while China restricts exports, it simultaneously invests in mines in Africa and Oceania, controlling the supply chain from the source. Analysis The vicious cycle of the global supply chain is essentially China's mastery of a technology plus resources dual hegemony. Western countries wanting to break free from this dependence must either invest heavily to rebuild the industrial chain, which isn't guaranteed to succeed, or continue to be constrained by China. In this game, China has already won the starting line. Conclusion 
Rare Earth War 2.0, on the surface, appears to be a resource scramble, but it's fundamentally a contest of technological dominance. China has used acupuncture point controls to precisely strike at the lifelines of Western industrial chains. The struggles of the US and its allies only serve to prove one thing, without rare earths, even the most advanced weapons are scrap metal, and the most impressive technologies are empty talk. Want to know how much longer China can play its rare earth card? Follow me, and tomorrow we'll talk about the financial war behind rare earths. Feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments section, and let's brainstorm together.